hello, hello, Facebook, Dixie Bell's Facebook page. Hello, everybody. How are y'all tonight? Please say hello when you come on. My name is Tracy. I'm with Tracy's Fancy, and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint, and we go live here every single Wednesday night um, for what we call Hashtag Whimsical Wednesday right here on Dixie Bell's Facebook page. Um, thank you guys for joining us tonight. This is my sidekick. I've got a partner in crime tonight. A lot of y'all already know him. This is my husband, Matt. Hello. And, oh shoot, I forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. Hold on just a sec. Please hold. Uh, do not disturb. Back up. There we go. Awesome. Let's put that back on. There we go. There we go. Yay, Christine. Okay, we've got people out there. Listen, this is a super easy project that makes a huge impact in your home. So y'all know that Dixie Bell Paint um, has been, for the last few weeks, let's see, they're doing around the house. So they're wanting us to focus. They're giving us something to focus on every single week. So um, hi, Sarah. Hi, Valerie. Thank you for saying hello. Hi, Jason. Um, so the first week it was the entryway. So we did a pot on the entry yep, that's on our right. porch, right? Mm -hmm. a, por a pot on our porch. Uh, the second week was, what was last week? I thought that was last week. Oh, oh, last week. No, that was first week. The second week was in the living room, the family room. And we did, uh, my friend's table where I painted and, and waxed, waxed it. And, um, I did a stain top. Haven't posted that yet. And then this week, Dixie Bell has asked us to focus on uh, the dining room. So we just so happened to have redone, um, back in March, right after COVID, COVID first hit, we redid our chairs in our dining room. And we have six chairs and we've only redone four. So we have the two armchairs because why? We ran out of upholstery. We didn't have fabric. Did the math wrong. But do we And then they discontinued it. Yeah, so do we have fabric now? No, we don't. We're just going to destroy some chairs. But we're going to do the chairs anyway. We're just going to go ahead and do it anyway. Hey, Brittany. Hi there. Hi, Brandy. Um, so a lot of people are really glad because over on my page, they were like, we've been waiting for you to do these chairs, but here we are. We're going to do them tonight for you guys. So what does that have to do with paint? I'm going to paint while Matt shows you how to take your chair apart, the, the upholstery part of your chair. We've never done this before. We are not upholsterers. Uh, but it's something that a lot of people were interested in. So here we are. Please push the share button. Share, share, share. I think this is something that a lot of people will like to see. So let me, um, let both of us kind of back out of the way. Uh, oh, by the way, I need to do the whole, you know, if you're new to Dixie Bell, please let us know that you're new to Dixie Bell. If you've never tried Dixie Bell before, let us know if you have any questions. Dixie Bell paint is a fabulous chalk mineral paint. It makes everyone feel like rock stars. This guy right here is the one who painted the other four chairs. He uses Dixie Bell paint all the time. Tell him how much you love it. It's a good product. I've used a bunch of other chalk paints, and this is the best one we've come across. So it's good. Thank Very goodness, good. right? Thank mm -hmm. goodness since, since I now work with them, right? That's right. <laughs> So yes, we've been using it for three years and it's in every room in our house. So these chairs Matt did in March, um, we did the body of them and uh, it's in caviar. We used caviar paint. Uh, thank you, Shane. And uh, I was asking if we use satin or gator hide, but he thinks we used gator hide. Put on gator hide. Uh, two coats? Did you do two coats of gator hide? Probably not. They have held up beautifully. They get dinged all the time by the grandkids running their toys and stuff into them, and they've held up great. So we have no issues with paint coming off. But what I love about gator hide over caviar or gator hide over in the navy or gator hide over aubergine, any of those super dark paint colors, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but if you paint a dark color and you don't put a good sealer on it, when you touch it with your fingers, like the oils from your fingers or the, the dampness of... Matt's fingers because his hands are always sweaty or um like if you have dust always has me working. if you have dust on your fingers and you touch touch a dark painted piece it'll leave your fingerprints on it really bad but if you put a good coat on if you put a good satin coat or gator hide is great it gives this nice slick finish to it so that um you don't have to leave those fingerprints, which is great because people grab the chair and they pull it out, you know, put it back and you don't want to have fingerprints all over your painted chair. So, oh, Nancy's on. Say hi, hon. Hello. So, this fabric, um, the, this table and chair set was given to me by my sister years ago. And we've had that fabric right there on it forever. Turn the camera a little bit. It's just your typical Tuscan, you know, Tuscan look uh, 
golds and reds and we just don't have those colors in the house at all anymore we have golds but we don't have um the reds and and i really have never liked paisley and it's a paisley print so uh we ripped that off we've got leopard on it this is what it looks like when it's done so i'm gonna paint the chair tonight and matt's gonna just take the fabric off of a chair as well in fact he's already taken one off that's ready for me to paint so i'm going to show you what it looks like when he gets it off okay so i'm going to stand up um and turn this chair around and bring and show you the back and then bring the other one. So you just you just wait right there, baby. Um, okay, so this is the chair here. This is painted in two coats, two coats of black. Two coats caviar. Two, co two coats of caviar, guys, no primer. And uh, he thinks just one coat of gator hide. This is the back. We did a crushed, uh, a crushed velvet teal because this is one of the accent colors in my house. This is a pop of color that we've got all over the house. This in a, like a pink. Uh, and then we used just a gold braid around it. I really wanted to pull out the gold for the dining room. So I know they're super gaudy. I like gaudy. It's my thing. He's Tammy Faye Baker. He's, he says it's Tammy Faye Baker. Um, I don't care. He goes for it. He's okay with it. So this is the back of the chairs. Okay, so um, that's it. That's what it looks like. So now let me show you. Let me grab, um, let me grab this other chair and show you what it looks like when it's been deconstructed. So this is a deconstructed chair, you guys. Um, the seat he's pulled up, but I'll tell you about that in just a minute. He's not gonna take the upholstery off of it because we literally upholster right over the top of this fabric and we'll tell you about that in just a minute while I'm painting. And then the back, he's gonna do for you, but this is what it looks like. It has this foam backing on it and that's great. You can leave that. Behind that is the straps, the upholstery straps. That's what's underneath there. But you can leave this foam backing up. I can leave that up while I'm painting. Um, and then on the back side, oh, well, the foam just came off. And then on the back side, uh, just like the front cushion, you're, you're going to leave this on? No. Or do you pull this off? Well, actually, I, I am going to leave that on. And then we spray the yeah. adhesive. So we leave this on the back of the chair as well, you guys. Um, uh, we put the fat, we use that teal fabric, what is the velvet or velour, whatever that is, the velvet, um, we use spray adhesive. And actually one of my followers on Facebook told me this. It's a great idea. So you use spray adhesive and you just spray all of this chair and then you get your other fabric. Once it's cut, he used, um, we took one off and made a pattern out of it, right? That's right. Made a pattern. And then we just put it on there and smoothed it out. And it, that velvet fabric just adhered to this like you wouldn't believe. It's never come loose. And then he did all the tucking in and then he put the, the braiding around it. It was so simple. And the braiding is a good way to hide mistakes. It doesn't have to be perfect when you adhere that to the back and the braiding will cover up any imperfection. Okay, so I'm gonna start painting here for you guys and uh, we will answer any, oh, hey, Dixie Belle, we will answer all Lisa's on. He is, he is a good guy, y'all know that. He's a good guy. Okay, so let me show you, this is all you need. This is all you need. Clean your chairs first, wipe them down with a good cleaner, either use like a vinegar and warm water one-to-one -one solution, or um, I use White Lightning by Dixie Bell. It's a great cleaner. You just mix a little bit of the crystals into a water spray bottle. You just spray them down with water, um, or you can put it on a rag. You just need to make sure if you use White Lightning that you also follow it with a clear coat of water um, behind that. Okay, so um, thank you Dixie Bell for sharing my link. I really appreciate that. Hey, Pat, I got some good regulars on here. Okay, guys, so. Uh, then all you need is your color. You need a color. Pick your color. If you're going with a dark color, you do not need to prime this chair. I'm not priming this chair. So I'm going with black. I don't have to prime it. It's safe. If I wanted to go like everybody wants to go, you know, bur uh, burlap or uh, sawmill gravy or drop cloth. Everybody wants to go drop cloth. Um, I would prime it. I would prime this. So I would use Dixie Belle white a Dixie Belle Boss in white. That's what I would do if I were trying to go drop cloth from this dark paint here. But I'm gonna go with no primer right here. This is actually an older jar of caviar that's been opened and used many times. There's very little paint left in the bottom, but I like it because it's kind of thick. Hey, Sue! Um, and that's the way, that's the way um, I want it to go on today is a little bit thicker for my first base coat. Um, hi, Edie. Okay, so Matt is gonna get to work over here on the side. I'm gonna just start painting and I'll watch the screen. Um, what do you do first, babe? You wanna talk him through what you do first? All right, paint. first thing I'm going to do is turn the chair over, 
there are a series of screws under here holding the cushion to the frame. So I'm going to unscrew those, remove that cushion. Really, I, I also want to take off the, uh, what do you call this? The railing. Is it railing? Uh, what do you call that, guys? The trim? Trim? Ribbon? Ribbing? Trim? Ribbing, maybe. I don't remember. I don't know what Regardless, we're going to rip it off. That... And we're not going to replace it. Yeah. And then I'm going to take the same thing off of the back, and I'm going to leave this in place. A lot easier that way. Um, and that's it. All right, so y'all watch what he does, step one, okay? And then while he's getting set up for that, I'm going to tell you that I'm using my Dixie Bell FM, which is my Dixie Bell flat medium brush. I don't know if these are in stock, uh, but it's my favorite brush to use to do chairs because chairs usually have spindles, legs. Uh, I don't know if y'all notice that these chairs have spiral. Uh, the legs have spirals in them, so it's a really easy size brush to use to work around. Um, so this part's really easy, and uh, we did the four of these. Did I help you paint? I did help you paint a couple of those other chairs. So. Nope, you don't, don't think, think I did? Nope, I okay, don't. well, I did the dining room table with the wood grain all by myself. Oh, welt, you guys. Seam binding, welt. Joy says stuff. Hi, Joy. I like stuff. Okay, so I, but we've given all kinds of names for what that ribbing stuff is called. All right. So, like I said, this will take two coats of paint. Uh, probably could get away with one, but just for durability, we're going to do two, just like we did on the others. Um, so I'm just going to give it one coat. And if you're new to Dixie Bell or any type of chalk mineral paint, usually dries really, dries really quickly. Um, these are usually dry within about 20 minutes, depending on if you're painting inside, outside, what your humidity is. But within about 20 minutes, you're ready for your second coat. So your projects go really super fast. Uh, has anyone else on here painted their dining room table or their chairs? I would love to know. I'd love to know. I think it's something that a lot of people want to do, and it's actually usually a lot of people's first projects. Um, I consult with a lot of people who are doing it for their first time. Okay, so he turned it over. He took the cushion off. The cushion's off to the side. Now, you don't re you're just going to lay the fabric right over that cushion, the seat? Okay. All right, so now he's flipped the chair over to the back. So I'm just going to peel part of this up so I can get a grip with a pair of pliers. Let me put this up here. So. Debbie, Debbie to Kirkwood says Matt painted all the chairs. She remembers. Debbie Thompson says you painted all the chairs. They're, they're going to, they've got your back. So I just grab a hold of one of these and then yank really hard. Whoa, wow, you're aggressive. Really aggressive, dude. Yeah, so if your husband doesn't have dinner ready for you when you get home or something like get that. Get down here where they can see you. They can't even see you talking. Take out your frustrations. <laughs> you used it for the first time last week. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you loved it. For sure, one of my first projects. It's on my to-do list, Michelle says. I'm late, Valerie. You're not late, hon. I feel bad because they can't, they really can't see you working. He's way up there. So, are you going to do the same thing here? Are you going to take it and yeah. rip it? It looks like the same piece there. So, tell them what, you're finding something a little different on this one? Well, I can't tell that this is a separate piece of material. It's got to be, though. So, my job is really easy. Oh, here he goes. Oh, oh, oh. He's so tough. Estelle, Estelle's done the chairs and not the table. So the chairs are the the chairs are the hard part. You've done the hard part. The the paint and the chairs are the hard part. Uh, yeah, that's the hard part. Christine likes your manly technique. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So and that's it. We're done. That's it. Now, what about what are you going to use for a pattern? Don't you use something for a pattern? Well. Can't you show them? I'd have to remove the back on this one too. All right, I'll go ahead and take the fabric off of this. Okay, so I'm going to make him do this in case this is something you want to do. All right. What he's doing is he's taking off the fabric off of the back side. In case it's something you feel you need to do, you can do that. Then you want to save this piece of fabric 
for your new fabric. So you'll lay this piece down on top of your new fabric and trace it out. He used a Sharpie marker, right? Yeah. He just used a Sharpie marker, traced it out, and um, then used that fabric and put right up there. But then someone came along and said, hey guys, you don't have to take that fabric off. You uh, see it's all stapled in. Do you really want to do that? No, but you wanted a pattern. <laughs> Okay, let's not. Let's not. That's a lot of work. Is yeah, it going to rip off? Uh, some of it rips, yeah. Okay, let's just leave it. It's easier to leave it. I recommend leaving it. Okay, so there we go. It's easier to leave it. We're going to leave it. If We're you have any stray staples hanging out, by the, once you pull off your railing, make sure you get them out before you start putting the new stuff on. So do y'all get why we're leaving it? Because someone recommended, someone that watched, they recommended and they said, uh, just leave the fabric and you can just use spray adhesive to put your fabric right on there. And it worked, like it was so much easier. Okay, babe, will you move that chair that way and I'm gonna spin this one over. All right, so that's it. Will you come say bye and you are you are relieved of your services, unless you wanna stay and paint the other chair. Bye guys, good having you. We'll see you next time. Um, can you use the foam from the other chair as a pattern? Yeah, you could, right? Yeah. You could. Of course, you wouldn't be able to get to the foam without taking the upholstery off anyway, so you could use either one. Oh, that's right, because we took the front off, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I hope that that, that you know, what I thought would be helpful to y'all, um, obviously, some of you can, don't have upholstered chairs, and you can just paint your dining room chairs because they're solid wood. Or maybe it's the easy where you just paint the seat. You know, like our breakfast room chairs just had... Uh, upholstery on the seats and you just unscrew that you put new fabric on it and you screw the seat back on but these we were a little bit nervous to do because we'd never done anything like it and one day we were like what the heck let's just let's just do it you know we'll just do it and it really wasn't that difficult but I had no neither one of us had any idea what was going to be behind there we didn't know what that looked like and um so I thought that that might be helpful to some of y'all tonight uh, that are considering using Dixie Bell paint and make, you know, completely changing your dining room set or, or your breakfast room set or your kitchen table, whatever. Um, I thought it would be helpful. So, Kathy Hess, you got on late. That's all right, hon. You, di you didn't miss much. You just m missed Matt being super aggressive, uh, taking, taking fabric off of a chair. So the only thing about painting chairs is that you need to make sure that you go from every angle. Look at the chair from every angle. Because you can sit up close just like this and spin the chair and spin the chair. And then you'll think, okay, I'm done. And you'll wash your brushes. And then I know y'all know this. And then you'll go inside. And then the next day you come out and there's going to be like one whole brown leg. And you're like, what the heck? What the heck? How, where did the brown leg come from? <laughs> I totally missed it. So you need to look and look and look and make sure you've covered every every leg, every side. Um, and by the time you finish doing all of these spindles and all of the legs and you're ready to start coat two, uh, it's already dry. It's ready to go. So you can paint an entire chair, then set it to side to dry and start on the second chair. Once you get them all done, then just go back and start putting your top coat on. And that's it. Now, someone just asked me a question I saw about a cigarette hole. What were y'all saying? Um, oh, I ordered a leather repair kit online. It was a game changer. Okay, so y'all are talking about leather now. So y'all know I do paint uh, leather. A lot of us on here have used Dixie Bell. Dixie Bell paints on leather beautifully. In fact, in fact, this is my honest opinion, and I say this often, it paints better on leather than it does on, well, okay, my opinion. I prefer the finish on leather than I do the finish on uh, fabric. The finish on fabric, you have to be super tender and super careful and add lots of water and you know, you've gotta know the steps and the process. Not on, not on leather, and I've painted a lot of leather. You just paint it and it just dries beautifully. Um, Oh, how's my tailbone feeling? The same. The same. Uh, which top coat is the best for durability for chairs? So I use, okay, I've used several things. You can use Easy Peasy Spray Wax if it is a fabric chair. If it's a fabric chair, use Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Um, that works for me, but a lot of people like to use uh, 
the clear wax, the clear wax in the tin, the best, besting wax and clear. They think that it gives a, a more buttery feel. I've had the most luck with mine by using besting wax and clear. And I don't spray it on, I put it in a bowl and I use like a chip brush and I really work it into the fabric. Just like you would a wax, but it's the spray wax, the real watered down spray wax. Not watered down, but you know what I mean. The liquidy wax in the spray bottle. Uh, if you're talking about on leather, same thing. But I, you can use a straight top coat on the leather, at least I did. I have, those were more like leather, excuse me, leather headboards and such. Um, but again, you can use the Besting Wax and Clear, or you can use the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. But this made a huge difference in our dining room, going from brown to black. That was, it, it really made, it, I don't know, it just, it made it, it went from being uh, homey, like real homey, which was fine, to uh, not really classy, but just kind of, yeah, kind of classy, but kind of fun, kind of extra. Um, what are y'all talking about? Thank you. Oh, someone is saying, that's a good point. Someone saying turn the chair upside down also, or to start with, or before you're done. Definitely, you. it's really easy. I'm doing it because I'm sitting down here on the ground with you guys, but if I weren't, it's great to just flip your chair upside down and have all your legs pointing up, and you can just stand there and point or sit there and, and uh, point. Sit there and point. You can just sit there and paint. Um, but yeah, thank you. I like them too, I, and I, y'all know how much I love caviar. And as far as upholstery, no one's asked. I'm surprised no one's asked. Uh, so I went today real quick. I had very, very little time. I really wanted to have my new fabric for tonight. I wanted to say, okay, we decided on fabric, but we haven't. And I went to the fabric store and there was the, there was the longest line, uh, a bunch of people in line to have their fabric cut. But I was like, okay, I can wait that out. I, I have time to wait in the line to get my fabric cut. But then I looked at the checkout and there were 15 people in the checkout line at Joanne Fabrics today. I was like, yeah, that's not happening. I don't have time for that. I'm not gonna wait and then have to wait for 15 people to get to the register. <laughs> not happening. Okay, there's some stringies back here that I'm not liking. Uh, so I'm gonna pull those up and then try to paint and not bring them back down into the paint. They're hanging from that raw fabric up there. Uh, let's see. So does anyone have any questions? Any questions for me? Let me tell you what I'll do next. I'll go all the way around this chair, which if I weren't talking, it would be really fast. And then I'll do it again. I'll go all the way around the chair with my next coat of caviar. My next coat, I will not put it on with this thick. My next coat, I'll use my spray bottle. I'll be using my spray bottle and adding some water to it and just do sort of like an overall wash again because it's not gonna need, you don't need much of a coat on the next one. I don't want to have like super thick, you know, I don't want my paint to be super thick on here. Just doing it with this first coat. So I actually have a brand new jar also that I can open and have paint with a little bit of a different consistency. Hello, Miss AG Designs. Those lines, Brittany, it is crazy. Crazy. I'm like, what on earth? What is it? Because I wonder if right now because it's Halloween and they, you know, they had all their Halloween stuff. And I'm like, are people sewing costumes or what? On everybody, go go do something else. I need to buy some fabric. <laughs> what the heck? But the fabric, I did look around, and the fabric that I had my eye on was a a, a velvet like the back of these chairs, but it was a charcoal. But it was kind of a silvery charcoal. So I thought I might be doing a silvery, like a silvery gray, and then with the black, the black trim. I thought that would be really pretty. So I'll uh, do this first coat. I'll go back around and do my second coat, and then it'll it'll already be dry. I don't have to let it cure overnight. Don't have to let the paint cure overnight or anything. You can go ahead and top coat it and uh, I'll put my top coat on. Now you don't have to top coat Dixie Belle paint, y'all. You don't, it is a self-sealing paint, but it does need uh, 21 to 30 days to really, really cure and seal itself. I never have, I'm not gonna not use my chairs for 21 to 30 days, so I don't have the patience to let it be a self-sealing paint. Um, 
What, Christine? No way. You cannot. Hi, Judy. You cannot. Are you serious at Joann's? Like, you can pick out your fabric online or something? And I did not know that. Well, I decided I was just going to come home and order my fabric on Amazon. <laughs> and just, you know, have it delivered to my door. I didn't know that. That's great to know. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'll do just a coat. I, I mean, I would prefer to do two coats of Gator Hide. I didn't know Matt only did one coat of Gator Hide. I'm not surprised by that though, honestly. Like I said, I would not be spinning this chair. I normally would have this chair upside down. I uh, started buying fabric at Hobby. Yes, and I do like, but they don't, my Hobby Lobby, I don't know if it's because of COVID right now, but the Hobby Lobby uh, here, the fabric selection has not been good at all. Not a good fabric selection. So guys, what about your dining room tables? Who's painted a dining room table? So are people leery to do that? And I, I, I do say this, if you're a beginner, um, your dining room tables, you know, you need to, I feel like you need to do a little bit of practicing before you do a tabletop surface because your tabletop surface is big and flat. And to me, I thought I would just give a few tips here. Big and flat to me is harder than something that has a lot of curves and carvings um, because big and flat shows every everything that you do. Big and flat's gonna show, you know, every inconsistency, any mistake or you know extra character that you might be giving it on accident um, that will show with big and flat so um, I feel like but I will tell you what I did and this really oh how funny who said that Brittany I'd have to charge about two to three times what I did before I do any more chairs isn't that the truth big it is with eight chairs Countertop soon, Valerie. That is brave. You're so brave. Good for you. Good for you. So maybe during uh, the kitchen week, because we are going to have a kitchen week, maybe someone uh, that does Dixie Bell Lives will do counters again and just refresh your memory. I'm sure you've probably studied up on it. Anyway, what I was going to tell y'all is that I did uh, my tabletop with the wood graining tool. I use the wood craning, wood graining tool. I know it does, Judy. It does go on so beautifully, so easy. It has great coverage. I mean, honestly, I don't know where I'm gonna need two coats, but I guess I'll decide that when it dries, but I think one coat really is fine. But anyway, I use the wood graining tool. Wood graining tool is great on tabletops. If you are a new painter and you're a little apprehensive about it, uh, and it also helps the, I feel like it helps the durability of your table because you've got several layers of paint. You do the wood graining tool. You put a couple coats of Dixie, of Gator Hide, Dixie Bell's Gator Hide on top of it. And, um, and it is a beautiful finish. I've got it on, uh, it's on my website. I know Dixie Bell has shared my tabletop before. I think I have an IGTV about it. Uh, and I'm telling you, the kids, my adult kids come in with the baby's car seats and throw those up on the table and we eat, you know, we eat on it and throw their, everybody throws their purses on it. It's right by the entry. Um, it's held up really, really well. And the wood graining tools are so much fun. They're a lot of fun. You just used it, Rachel, you liked it. I loved it, loved it. And that was my first big project to do with the wood graining tool. I hadn't done anything more than just, uh, I used to do those wood walls and I had used the wood grain tool on the wood walls, the planks, like planks of wood, but I'd never done, you know, like a big, a whole big surface. Okay, so see how I'm doing this? I might forget to go up underneath here, but when you've got your chair upside down, which you should do first, um, you would have painted under there. See the back, can y'all see the back of the sleigh? Uh, love the wood graining tool. I just used it for the first time last week. Not sure why. That's what I said, Francis. That's what I said, too. I'm not sure why I waited so long. I don't know either. And I think it would be so fun to do in some, you know, really bright and bold colors. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Thank you for asking about my tailbone. Whoever asked that. My tailbone is about the same. It's a little bit better. I've been icing it. Is that too much information? I've been icing it, but that's helped a lot. At the end of the day, kind of silly, 
I'm like, can you get the ice out? It's time to ice, time to ice the tailbone. All right. So I've got most of the body done. I just need to do the insides and the front side of this chair. But that's going to require me to stand up. So I think that's it. I think I'm going to close you guys. I uh, just finished my bathroom countertop with the wood grain. What color did you use, Tammy? Repainting a small dresser for the wedding I'm doing for the bride's room. Oh, Mindy, that's really that's really sweet. It's going to be like a shabby, like a shabby look. That's awesome. Can you explain the wood graining tool and what it does? The wood graining tool, let me get it. I'll show it to you. Hold on just a second. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I use it a lot. In fact, I just ordered another one. I have a brand new one. This is what it looks like when you get it in the package. It comes with this big big one, a smaller one, a handle, and then this little tr triangle looking piece. So this is them out of the package that I've used a bunch. So this is the one that I did my dining room table with. And then they also have the smaller one that you can do. And you, can, you don't even have to put it on the rocker. You can just use your hand actually. And then this is just to add different striations of different sizes. Um, you know, all three sides are a little bit different. It's like a combing action that you can either cross hatch or just add some striations through it if you want to. Just gives you some versatility with it. Um, Debbie, really? He, both of mine were painted. We did just get a brand new breakfast table though, but um, both of my tables were painted. That is so funny. Um, he would have starved here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this is it. So what you do is you want to lay down a base coat of paint. So you would lay down your base coat first. You let that dry. And then you would do a second coat of paint. Now, that second coat of paint, whether it's one color or you, maybe you use two colors or you want to do it like a, paint it like a calico cat in a big, long section, but, you know, several different colors. Uh, or you can use, you don't even have to use paint on that second coat. You can use the Voodoo gel stains. Um, you can actually use no paint gel stain if you want. I uh, did that on a top of a piece that I shared, just a white bar with the orange and gold on the inside. I did the top with no paint gel stain, the uh, oil-based gel stain with these. So um, that's what's all over it actually. <laughs> so you just put it down, like you just put it down, like if this were, the tabletop, you would just start on one end while it's wet. So the first coat you let dry. Then you put your second coat on, either one color, two colors, mix of colors, whatever you wanna do. Um, you put it down and while it's wet, you just take this little gadget here and you just pull it towards you and you rock and pull at the same time. So you just rock it. You just rock, pull, rock, however fast you wanna do it. And it's amazing. You'll see, you'll see that it starts to leave this wood grain and then the circular pattern right here makes knots, like pine knots. And then it like drags the knot and then it goes back to regular. It makes them kind of wavy. It is amazing and so much fun and you totally need to get one. It is, it is so much fun. So this is a real, this is bigger, and then this one does it in a smaller area, or if you want, or you can, what I did was I did this one, and then I took this one in smaller areas and kind of filled in some smaller areas and just lifted it up. So you start at one end of your table, and you rock it all the way down to the other end of your table. And then you lay down the next row of paint, the wet paint, you go up to the top, and you rock all the way down to the end of the table. I have an IGTV. I think Dixie Bell has one. If you go over to my IGTV, I have an IGTV there. I also think I have a YouTube video of it. Um, so anyway, that's that. You should give it a try. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Tell him to eat on the floor. You can just eat on the floor. Well, you guys, thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all being here. I know this was kind of boring wind. It was just paint, like just paint. One color of black paint. But it makes a huge difference around your dining room table, I promise. And I hope that it was helpful to see what the guts look like on the inside of a dining room chair. So um, uh, I hope that was helpful, you guys. I wish you all the best as you paint around the house. And um, I hope y'all are enjoying all of the tutorials. Dixie Bell, thank you so much for having me. I put my link at the top of this video if you want to give a um, click there and follow it on over to shop for some caviar paint yourself or maybe to order a wood graining tool and give this a try. It's a lot of fun. You need two colors, whatever you're gonna do, okay? And then also, if you're not following me on Tracy's Fancy on uh, Facebook, I'd love it if you'd 
just click my picture up there and go over and give me a like and a follow as well. I would really appreciate that. Um, not boring, Brittany. Thank you. I hope not. We had small numbers tonight. I'm not real sure why, but that's okay. I don't care. We, we were here and that's all that matters. We are the party, right? Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, you guys. So good to see y'all. Bye, Michelle. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.